Women of CTV with Aaron Racine. I think it's an interview that no one would have wanted to hear, but Aaron, you've made the decision to retire from football. Can you talk us through it? Yeah, no, just um, obviously the ACL injury that I picked up in October is a bit more complex than first thought. So, you know, the first indication we got it was an ACL rupture, relatively quite simple. Um, but once I saw um, a consultant for the second time, a sort of knee specialist, they explained the process is a bit more complicated than just your standard ACL um, injury. Um, so the whole layoff or recovery time for this is around 15 months. Um, and just given my situation in terms of dedicating time to the rehab, obviously a young family, a partner, etc. It's just one of those ones where it just doesn't really quite fit in terms of, it's not really quite realistic to come back from it. Um, one, it's been my fourth ACL, um, but secondly, when I come back fit, I'll be 34 years old. Like I said, got a young family. So I think there's other priorities in my life now that I think need to take, um, take a sort of a front seat and um, sort of park the bus on this part of my life. Completely understandable. And as you say, you've had your battles with these injuries previously. How have you found handling those throughout your career? Yeah, I think um, well, my first one I was quite young, so I think quite naive to it. I was in a, I was in a full-time um, environment, so I think it was, that helped massively in terms of support. Um, with regards to my second one, I sort of found myself about a club and that was quite a hard one to take, trying to do everything on your own. But along with my second one, because I was in the same leg, the recovery time was quite similar, it's around 16 months it was. Um, and then my third one on the other leg, which I've done here a few years ago, again, back in the environment where you've got the support and the morale from the team, etc., which helps. Um, so yeah, and then obviously led me to this one, which I've got today. So look back on your career then as a whole, you started out at Southampton as a youth player, but I think best to say you made your name at Forest Green Rovers, with a long spell there, playoff finalists as well, leading them out at Wembley. Talk us through your career and some of your highlights <coughs> over the years. Yeah, I think, I think I've been riddled with injuries all through my whole career. I think when I first um, started at Southampton at 16, had my first knee up, um, at 19 had an ankle reconstruction, then my first ACL, at Forest Green 22, second ACL 24, third ACL 26, and then this fourth ACL here. So that sort of, in my eyes, sort of sums up my career really. But in terms of highlights that you just mentioned there, I think a big, obviously a big moment for me and a proud moment was walking out of Wembley as captain. Um, I unfortunately lost the game, um, but something that I obviously look back on and quite cherish those moments. And again, I think it feels like quite a short career, even though I'm obviously relatively old, but in the short career that I have been playing, when I've been fit, the highlights obviously winning the league here, um, taking it into the, the next level which the club's never been before, which will be, always be a proud moment for me. And then obviously locally last year winning the County Cup, which is obviously another medal to add to the collection. Some great highlights there, um, but as you say though, it's been, um, it felt like a little relatively short career for you because of the injuries and you're only 32 now. Is there any regret at all with that across your career? No, I don't think you can, I, I'm one of those people that really sort of believe in regret, I just believe just you look back in hindsight and you reflect on things and learn from it going forward. Um, I can't take any regrets in my career in terms of you know, injuries etc. I'm one of the lucky ones that's actually managed to have a, you know, a career that's spanned over 10 years. I've actually got to enjoy it and I'm one of the lucky ones that's actually got some trophies to sort of show for it. Um, so you can look at it from both sides, you can look at it and be depressed and down about it or you can look at it from the flip and see what actually has been achieved over, over the spell. And what, what a spell it's been, especially here at Worthing, I think it's safe to say you're beyond the fans' favour at this point uh, for some of the things you've done at this club, as you said, captain for the league title winning season. Just how special was that year finally getting into the National League South? Yeah, it's always big. I think when I first came here, I was, I was injured. Um, got into the coaching and eventually signed as a player. But I think ever since I've been here, there's always been ambition in the club to you know, go and win the league. So it's just a bit unfortunate that it happened so late in terms of COVID. Um, but I think that also made it a bit sweeter when we did get it. It was almost like a long time coming and made it a bit more, or we appreciate it a bit more when it did happen. So, yeah. Yeah, and even when you started out at Worthing, it was, you said it was under the spell of injury. You came in as a coach, if I remember rightly, assistant manager initially, before you eventually made your debut at Dulwich Hamlet. Uh, that free your defeat in the snow, I don't know if you remember that one. No, I do, yeah. No, well, I, I think I come in, I was just coaching the kids, and I think, uh, you know, when Hinch first came in, I think it was just, just to help him 
in any way I could. I wouldn't really class it as assistant manager, but just a, just another helping hand and to see what I can do to help the club. Um, but yeah, like I said, yeah, and then obviously signed, and then the debut at Dulwich, um, away in the snow, which I do remember. And then, yeah, like I said, it's just been sort of an onwards and upward journey from there. Every year has been ambitious um, from the club, the players, everyone about it. And um, I think, you know, if COVID didn't happen, we would have got to the National League quicker. And maybe you never know, might have been out of this one by now as well. But um, yeah, all in all, it's been a good, a good, a good journey here. So obviously your job as a centre back is to stop goals happening. You've often joked about not quite getting as many as you'd like in terms of scoring. Is there any that you can remember that you pick out as a favourite? Uh, no, I, I, I honestly couldn't even remember the goals that I score. Uh, that's how little I score. Um, yeah, it's never been one. Of, it's never been a, a, a big part of my game in terms of I've never done it much wherever I've been. I've never managed to score goals um, for the team. Um, so yeah, I probably couldn't pick out a particular one. Particular highlight though from your career? Um, you'd, uh, I'd say winning the league here, because you, you generally just won something. I think winning something at whatever level is always um, a proud moment. Um, playing at Wembley is, is a proud moment, but I think it was sort of smeared by the loss. So you can't quite appreciate it as much as maybe what you could have and should have. Um, but I think winning the, I think, like I said, winning the league here after missing out two years in a row because of COVID made it that bit more special. And uh, so you mentioned before about your, your coaching background, uh, having done a little bit with the youth team, some in the first team helping out. You had a role as academy director for a time. What's next for you? Do you think you'd stay in football? Do you think you'd keep a coaching role? Um, I would love to stay in, in coaching at some capacity, whether it be now or in the near future. Um, I did like to, or I did want to try and get involved with the youth teams here, but it doesn't quite fit in terms of what days they train and, you know, the family stuff at home and my partner's work. But I don't want to rule it out and I think eventually I'll get back into it at some capacity. But in the short term, I'm looking to start sort of um, some youth fitness classes. So my background before, or during my time here when I first started, I started doing some um, gym training for kids. Um, and I think I'm going to go back into that in the short term and try and um, keep myself busy that way. I think it keep yourself busy, I think a noble goal. Um, Aaron, congratulations on a brilliant career and thank you very much. Well, thank you.